There is no better opportunity to build your resilience than there is through the winter. And this is how I do it. Hello everyone and welcome to another video and to season two of The Wintering, which is a series all focused on resilience and how we can lean into the discomfort of the winter and come out as better versions of ourselves on the other side. Cold mornings, dark nights, long days, it can be really challenging and we can easily let it beat us, but this series is going to be focused around the things that I do, the things that I take on and the habits that I employ to get through it and come out as a stronger person. Today, I'm gonna to run through six points that I think are essential as an athlete, as a human being, however you want to categorize yourself so that you can tackle the winter head on and come out a better version of yourself. Number one is to mix it up. Number two is to set clear goals. Number three is to embrace the opportunity for discomfort. Number four is to try something new. Number five is to find your tribe, your community, people that you can suffer through this with. And number six is a big one on YouTube. We're gonna talk about routine. So what I'm going to do is talk through those six points, the reasons why I think they're essential and how you should consider them so that you can change some things in your day-to-day -day life to come out on top this winter season. As Jon Snow would say, winter is coming, but from the deleted scenes that you might not have actually picked up over the years, he also said make sure to like the video if you enjoy it at any stage, subscribe down below and hit the comments, as well as obviously prevent white walkers from getting through the wall. It all, it all tied up in the end. So do those things and we're gonna dive straight into point number one. <sighs> point number one is don't be afraid to mix things up. So what I mean by that is that winter is a fantastic opportunity to enter a bit of a period of GPP, which means general physical preparedness. And to give an example from the past, there are Olympic teams where the coaches have had them playing basketball, swimming, doing different sports that they've never played together before over the winter or in their off season, just to keep their energy systems ticking over, but without adding the psychological stress or the demand of an aggressive training block. So I use winter as an opportunity to work on my weak points, work in some variations, take a page out of Louis Simmons and Westside's methodology and work on some variation training. So whether that is in squats, like I've already listed out, or if you're tied to the bench press, then working on your close grip bench press or your incline bench press, maybe you're a crossfitter, maybe it's a great opportunity for you to work in some skills that you haven't had the chance to work in alongside a busy Metcon schedule over the summer. What I'm trying to say is, Find some new movements that excite you and you want to progress in and take the winter as an opportunity to work in a block of training where you can progress in some new movements because if you're out of touch with them, then you're gonna make progress and improving on your weak points is gonna help you as an athlete overall. So point number two is to set clear goals. Winter can be a difficult, challenging period of time and it's easy to just think, oh, I'll do what I can when I can. But all that is gonna do is make it more difficult to stick to a plan, execute good training sessions, stick to routines. You need some structures in place and you need some clear goals to set the structures around to underpin your day-to-day -day lifestyle and get ahead of that winter. So sitting here today, very hypocritically, I actually don't have a clear goal for the winter just yet. I'm still amidst recovery from the double brutal. This is sort of my first week of easing back into just some general training that Johnny's putting together for me before I really nail down a few things I wanna clear off before the end of the year going into early next year. But last year, let's use that as an example from my perspective, through my lens. 
If you have been around here for a while, you know that last year I was training for 660, which is a 600 kilo powerlifting total and a sub six hour 60 kilometer ultra marathon in the same day. So that was a really clear focus for me, which meant that Saturday mornings in the cold, I didn't wake up and think, oh, nah, I'm not gonna run today. I think I'll just take it easy. It meant, okay, I've got four hours in the diary. I know what pace I need to be moving at. All my stuff's ready from the night before. Let's go and get it. Came in in the afternoon, really proud of myself, making forward progress, getting ahead of the winter, beating the cold, and not falling victim to that lack of structure, that lack of goal framework that makes it very easy for the winter to just beat you down into the ground. If you're somebody that does a lot of outdoor training, like triathlons, running, etc., then winter might be a great opportunity for you to develop your indoor fitness. So it might be to go to a few CrossFit classes, to try and improve your strength, maybe aim for a bodyweight bench press, a bodyweight squat, your first deadlift over 100 kilos, get your FTP up on the turbo trainer. That's something I'm going to be focusing on myself. If you're really going to struggle and fight through sessions outdoors, then... Acknowledge that, tackle it head on and make a plan around some stuff indoors so that your training week is giving you value rather than becoming a stress. Ultimately, if you set a clear plan ahead of time, knowing that the winter is going to be challenging, because let's be honest, it is, we can put on a brave face, we can go oorah, we can go all hyper toxic masculinity and charge at it like a dinosaur with a big forehead. But there's going to be good days, there's going to be bad days. And the more of a plan you can set, the clearer your goals are, the more you will come out on top. So whilst I'm on the topic of setting some clear goals, if you would like to train like I am, apply the principles of this video and this series over the winter, then very excitingly, you can join our In Omnia Paratus Prepared in All Things training program, where we have a thriving community that are all about to take on the wintering. Four months of focusing on the principles of this series, applying them, going through it in programming, going through it in training chat rooms and online members community specific content. We are going to tackle the winter head on as a group and come out the other side with smiles on our faces, numbers on the board and better versions of ourselves that we can look at the mirror in. So if you want to train like I do, if you want to join a thriving community of people taking on the winter and training themselves across the board, becoming prepared in all things, then head to the top link in the description down below, get signed up. There's a seven day free trial so you can get a look at what the program is going to look like and very soon that programming is going to become the wintering. So point number three is to actively seek out and embrace discomfort and aside from standing upside down here are a few ways in which you can do that. So the most important thing off the bat to understand is that we need to reframe bad weather. We need to reframe our approach to training because We'll get good days, we'll get bad days, but the majority are not gonna be what we want. So it's important to reframe bad weather as an opportunity to be better, an opportunity to step outside, to wrestle with the elements, to face it and smile at it and come out victorious. And I appreciate my language in this video, it's quite dramatic, but I really do think that the feeling of getting a session done in tough weather, in the snow, in the wind, in the rain, gives you a real buzz. So I am a huge fan of committing to something that I know I don't like, but I know benefits me. And for me, that is swimming one kilometre in the open water every week throughout the winter. I documented it last year in the wintering and I'll do it again this year. But every time I get out of the car in my wetsuit, I'm thinking, oh, this is horrible, this is cold. I put my feet in the water and I don't want to do it. I put my face under, I don't want to do it. I start making excuses. And then before I know it, I've completed a kilometre, I'm back in the car and I'm feeling very proud of myself, which means the rest of the week, I'm on top of things, I feel like I'm not getting beaten down by the season, and I'm making that constant forward progress. Practically speaking, embracing discomfort and charging towards it does require some kit management and a sort of minimum requirement in terms of waterproofing, warmth, etc. So do make sure that you're well equipped and do make sure that you're doing a lot of plan and prep so that you are willing and ready to embrace discomfort, but to do it safely. So I think for the majority of us, the best thing that we can do, if we're looking at this from a completely new angle, or even if we're seasoned pros, set yourself a certain time every day, every second day, every third day, once a week, whatever it is, where you will do this thing. You will do X, Y, or Z, and you will stick to it. And then you'll build momentum that'll compound over time. Before you know it, the sun will be back, and you'll be in a much better position than you otherwise would have been had you let the winter beat you down. So next time you hear the wind howling, the rain's coming down, you'd rather pour yourself a cup of tea, have a couple of biscuits with your granny, and stay inside around a warm fire. Lace up your shoes, put on your shorts, find yourself some gloves, and walk out the door with a smile on your face, because embracing discomfort is the best way that we can build our resilience this winter. Point number four is to try something new. And yes, this kind of fits in with setting some clear goals for yourself and embracing discomfort, but I just encourage you to use this opportunity as a period of GPP where you're mixing things up, 
to set yourself a small achievable challenge, whether that's climbing up a mountain you've never been up before. If you're in the UK, you've got the Lake District, you've got Scotland, you've got Wales, maybe going up Snowdon for the first time is something you can achieve. Set a date, set a goal, work towards it and look forward to it come rain, snow or whatever may be. Again, as long as you are well equipped to do so. Going back to the GPP point, maybe this is the time of year where playing five aside on a Wednesday night might be good for you because you've got that sense of community where you can fight through things together as a team, whether it's pissing down with rain or whether it's a pleasant, crisp winter's evening. If you're predominantly training indoors, it might be a great opportunity to set yourself an unconventional strength goal. I did that earlier this year with the Dinny Stones and it was really rewarding for me. So whether it's getting yourself a set of Dinny Pins and giving them a crack, whether it's trying to do a 100 kilo sandbag carry for 100 yards, or doing a 50 kilo single arm dumbbell snatch, it doesn't matter. All I'm suggesting is that you choose something that's always fascinated you and use the winter as an opportunity to go at it. As this is a channel that focuses on hybrid fitness and we're obviously talking about different disciplines, maybe you come from a CrossFit background and this is a great opportunity to work on your gymnastics, learn some new skills, and improve your handstand walk distance. It doesn't always need to be about more weight on the bar, faster times, longer distances. There's simple human things that we can do throughout the winter that are just as rewarding and just as valuable. Like spending more time in the gym with people that we enjoy spending time with. That is just as valuable as another 20 kilo plate on the barbell. So don't view things as black and white as weight on the bar or time on the board. Think about what you want to achieve, what's important to you, what's going to keep you stable, happy and fulfilled over the winter and get it booked in. Because trying something new, committing to the things that are rewarding for us, will keep us afloat and moving forwards. Point number five is to find your tribe. Find your community. Because as human beings, there is a huge amount of value in suffering through things together. I've learned this firsthand over the years, and whilst the majority of my training is quite individual, when we come together for events, for big charity projects, for events that require support crews, the sense of community and spirit and joint hard work is really quite rewarding. So that's why things like Five Aside, that's why CrossFit classes, that's why going on a run with a friend on Mondays at 7 p.m. are all so valuable. If you can find your tribe, if you can find your community, if you can find some people that are there to support you, hold you accountable to the goals that you've set, to the GPP and the variations that you're mixing up over the winter, to the opportunities you present yourself with to embrace discomfort and you go through it together, you've got a much, much stronger chance of coming out the other side having had a successful and thriving winter. Just a quick reminder as well, if you would like to join our community with an Omnia Performance doing exactly that, then head to the top link in the description down below. Point number six is, drum roll please, the big buzzword on YouTube in the red corner, routine. It's something that's done to death. We speak about it a lot on here. I've done a morning routine video. I'll probably do another one. But having structure, having routine around all the things I've mentioned today is very important. Getting up in the mornings in the dark can be difficult, but it's very important to monitor and understand your circadian rhythm so you can get the most out of each day, so you can understand your sleeping and waking patterns so that you can really feel as optimized as you can on a day-to-day -day basis. What habits do you need to implement to get the best out of yourself? What things do you not need to do? I know if you're in the corporate world, silly season is fast approaching, which means that your alcohol intake is gonna go through the roof, which means that recovery is gonna be inhibited, your general energy is gonna be inhibited, but that is where Days Brewing might provide you with a fantastic solution. And if you would like 20% off some of their refreshing lager and pale ales without any of the downsides that I've just mentioned, then use the link in the description down below and you're doing myself and the channel a solid as well. So in terms of routine, the only real advice I'll give on this is to understand what's important, establish clear habits, and then establish clear structures that you can stick within. Don't try and change everything all at once because it's gonna make it difficult to do so and make you inherently hard on yourself when things will inevitably go wrong. Change one thing at a time, make it stick, understand what brings out the best in you, and then create clear structures and routines around all of the five points I've mentioned today so that you can get the best out of your winter. Simply by establishing a routine, sticking to it, even when you don't want to, is going to build resilience. So in my mind, that's a really neat way to tie up the six points that I've mentioned today. So let's go back to Fergus in the studio to conclude today's video. Hello, I'm Fergus and welcome to the studio. So now that I'm suitably hydrated, I thought we would round off today's video. Those are the six points I deem quite important and have been really useful for me over the past couple of years in terms of tackling the winter head on. In previous years, I've worked in a corporate environment and silly season, a lot of booze, a lack of training direction has actually really affected my mental health. So 
to stop making some silly ad hoc jokes every once in a while, I think it's really important to take these things on board and be honest with yourself because Christmas can be a difficult time of year. The winter can be a difficult period of time for us. We've got seasonal affective disorder. We've got loads of things going on, lots of commitments, lots of financial commitments that are going on. And if you can really get these things under control, control the controllables, another cliche, but very important, it will give you a fighting chance to come out the other side with a smile on your face. So speaking from personal experience, those are the six points that I think are really valuable. Doing exactly what I do might not be the right thing for you. That's just what I've learned over the years makes me tick. So ultimately, the opportunity for you all now is to go out there and find what makes you tick. If you are a seasoned professional and you get through every winter like an absolute champ, then please do drop some comments down below with your suggestions that other people might be able to take on board so that they can try some new things over this winter period. Just a quick reminder as well that you can get involved in our wintering group training intake through the top link in the description down below. If you are interested in hearing more topics around some of the things we've mentioned today, around resilience, around circadian rhythm, around habits, around sleep, then do make sure to tune into the podcast, bottom link in description and available on YouTube, Instagram and all major podcast platforms. And there is a members community for the podcast that will be going live very, very soon with a whole load of really in-depth content, research databases, monthly group seminars, live calls, loads of stuff going on, guest speakers. And I'm excited to get that over the line and I'm excited to have you there with me. But nonetheless, that is all I'm gonna say for the time being. I'm looking forward to getting some clear goals set out for me personally. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks or the next couple of videos, all will be made clear to you guys. But I just wanna say a huge thank you to those of you that are watching. Huge thank you to those of you that have seen the Wintering series from last year and are still here for the ride. As I know a lot of you are excited about this series, I'm excited to take it on. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be wet, it's gonna be windy but that's gonna make me a more resilient person. It's gonna make me a better version of myself. And let's not forget, resilience can go dormant, so we need to keep taking one step forwards, otherwise we'll start slowly moving backwards. So embrace that discomfort, set some clear goals, find a clear strategy, set that routine, find your tribe, find your community, mix things up, embrace the GPP, and have some fun. See you next time. Mm -hmm.